Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Jamie Underwood, Director of Marketing Communications at Alertus Technologies. Today's session will provide an Alertus Emergency Mass Notification System Overview, including a look at one of our innovative technologies, text-to-speech. We ask that you please hold all questions to the end of the webinar. However, feel free to type any questions in the chat box during the presentation and we'll be sure to come back to those during the Q&A at the end of the session. This webinar is being recorded, so please email marketing at alertus.com if you're interested in receiving video from today's webinar. I would now like to turn it over to today's webinar presenter, Alertus's National Sales Director, Brian Oakley. Thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, really excited to be talking to everybody today about the Alertus system and then also our text-to-speech. This is a really innovative capability that, that is allowed by the codes, embraced by the codes, and really allows you to leverage uh, voice-based assets in addition to items like the alert beacon, text, all those kind of things, digital signage, to get your word out very effectively in, a, in an emergency. So in this presentation, we'll be reviewing the alert's background. Quick summary there. Uh, emergency notification check challenges. These are the challenges that our customers come across in their everyday uh, challenges with doing emergency mass notification. And then we'll also touch on codes and market demand. I'll kind of tie that into the text-to-speech capability and how the codes have really adapted to allow you to use text-to-speech and those PA voice-based assets to get the notification out there. And then the Alertus uh, solution, focus in on text-to-speech. What are the different ways we can uh, do a text-to-speech notification? How is that done? Uh, how can we integrate that into uh, voice-based assets? and uh, some of the benefits of doing so. And lastly, we'll do a demo. I'll do a, uh, a notification. It'll be a panic button push. But then I'll, do, I'll issue an all clear, which will allow you to see how I can put free form text in the system and uh, have that all clear be read out over the uh, text-to-speech capability uh, on the fly. So alert us, uh, background. We're a pioneer in integrated auto-visual facility alerting for all hazards. You'll see uh, in the pictures on the right, uh, that was actually a, part of the beginnings of Alertus. The idea came from a, uh, an event that happened at the University of Maryland where a tornado went through campus. It ended up killing two students that were in a portable classroom. They had no way of knowing that tornado was coming. Uh, the founders got together and uh, 2002 founded Alertus out to solve that challenge, getting important emergency alerts out in a timely fashion so people can react accordingly to save life and, and property. So from that, it evolved uh, the alert beacon idea, and then that really grew into a full multimodal notification capability, which I'll review in, in, in this presentation. Since then, hundreds of college campuses, military bases, large high occupancy facilities like healthcare institutions, even the U.S. Capitol and, uh, and uh, DOD facilities have implemented Alertus. We're headquartered in the D.C. area, which keeps us very close to the FEMA, which uh, puts out a lot of the, the uh, the uh, regulations and uh, standards for emergency mass notification. So we manage, we monitor that very closely and incorporate all that into what we do so that the standards that are being uh, rolled out across the country are also uh, uh, embraced by the Alertus product. So how do you issue an emergency notification? When you think about it, you've probably got a text or email service. You can get that out. That, that covers a good number of people. You've also got the capability probably of uh, digital signage, but you might have two or three or four different digital signages on campus. Uh, you've got PA systems, but you've got to run somebody over to, to make an announcement on that PA and hope they say it correctly. You know, kind of the, the chain of uh, telephone, that game you play, where the message might change as it goes. Uh, you know, but you can run out, use those uh, voice-based assets. Maybe they're, they're uh, integrated together or, or networked, maybe not. Uh, maybe you've got outdoor speakers like uh, Giant Voice or something like that. Cable TV might be on a campus uh, throughout your facility, uh, but there's another process for activating that. Facebook and Twitter, you probably have to go to somebody within uh, corporate communications or uh, PR or marketing or something like that. Your fire alarms, generally those are in facilities. you got to um, work with them to activate those. So there's a lot of assets on campus. Uh, how do you activate those quickly? Generally when our, uh, our customers do tests, they find that it takes up to 30 minutes to coordinate that notification to activate all those assets. When seconds count, this isn't acceptable. You're going to miss a large number of people just by the fact that it's time-consuming to send that message out. 
So that's uh, the big value proposition, Alertus, and what we saw for our customers is bringing all these different technology components together, as well as uh, supplementing with things like our alert beacon, uh, LED marquees, panic buttons, and those kind of things, to make sure that our alert goes out very quickly, succinctly, consistently across all technology, uh, and there's no time lost. People can react, and, uh, and, and you'll save lives. Some of the other challenges that come up that we solve uh, that you know traditional uh, means of notification really really leave out you know like no way to no locations with no way to notify. Um, there's quite a few facilities that are either older, uh, haven't been updated that you know there really is no way to reach people in that building other than maybe a, a text message. Uh, you know we provide a lot of capabilities to be able to notify into those facilities, do it on a very cost-effective means. And leverage any kind of other assets that you have there, like the, the uh, desktop PCs, um, PA systems, as we'll talk more about text-to-speech here, those kind of things. Building's not staffed 24-7. You want to be able to, as an emergency manager or somebody responsible for getting the word out, be able to get a message to a building, even though you don't have a, a, a security manager there, maybe even a janitor or the principal if it's a school or something like that. You want to be able to get that message out there any time of day. You load a system through using uh, using the net the network that that goes out to those systems can allow you to send that message from anywhere, any means, and get that message out to a building that that you know may or may not be staffed by somebody that that is uh, trained to react appropriately. Special needs individuals. Uh, this provides compliance with ADA accessibility. Uh, the audio visual component of the alert system being able to provide a text based and audio. Uh, we'll focus on the uh, text-to-speech for the audio component. Provides ADA accessibility compliance. Loud environments. This is another one. Uh, a lot of times the answer is put speakers around. Well, you can't add more speakers or add no more noise to a loud environment like a manufacturing facility. Some of the trade schools that we support have uh, very loud, um, very loud, um, you know, labs and those kind of things. So the loud environment allows us to provide visual notification capabilities, our LED marquees, beacons, stro ancillary strobes, those kind of things, in conjunction with the, the voice-based capabilities. Uh, where cell phones aren't allowed, we run into this quite consistently where, uh, where students are, are told they have to turn phones off, that grades might be impacted. Uh, it might be that it's a healthcare facility, certain equipment, you can't take your cell phone. It may even be that those uh, buildings that you have Cell phones are loud, but the signal just dies going into them. There's, we all know those buildings. You go into them, and you step two feet within the door, and, and your cell phone's just not working. So uh, we're just being focused on the facility, and all those assets can get that message out. Then lastly, uh, difficulty reaching visitors and contractors. This comes up quite often. If your primary means is text or email, if you don't have the text or email for those visitors and contractors, they're going to be left out of your notification. Alertus really focuses on the facility, so if your visitors and contractors are in or around your buildings and you're employing many modes of notification that Alertus provides you to, to provide, that will ensure that your visitors and contractors are notified just by them being on campus. So we solve a lot of those challenges, and, and these are a lot of the, the exciting capabilities we can bring to your organization. Next, I'd like to touch on codes and market demand. Now we talk about this uh, quite often in these webinars, but I'll, I'll kind of tour tailor it a little bit more to text-to-speech and how some of these codes have changed to allow text-to-speech. Now, we all, all know that, you know, five, ten years ago, NFPA, fire alarming codes, all that, you know, fire only. Well, in uh, 2010, the codes were adopted uh, and, and adapted slightly to, and added, especially in the NFPA, uh, they added Chapter 24. This is a brand new chapter in 2010. That's been adopted and is in many of our codes for local municipalities now that allows you to use the PA system for that fire alarm system for other notifications beyond just fire. Well, this is exciting because now we can use that asset which has battery backups, it has uh, redundancy, it's fully monitored, to also deliver mass notification announcements. So that's really the big development in NFPA over the years. They also provide some uh, order on how you should implement mass notification some of the things they say is, you know, multimodal, you know, voice, audio, visual. Uh, they also want to see multiple, multiple uh, notifications and coordinated, uh, meaning coordinated with your, your text and email provider. Alertus can help with that as well to really achieve 
full notification, uh, both personal and building based at notification. Uh, the other one with uh, affects some of our customers in the DRD is UFC, Unified Facilities Criteria. This is really an innovator as well from the DOD. This goes into very much into detail around how mass notification is to be deployed in DOD facilities. Then lastly, one of the things we're seeing that's really driving the market beyond codes, and codes are putting order to exactly how customers should deploy uh, mass notification, and that is individuals now expect a certain level of, sef a certain level of safety when visiting a location or on the job. <coughs> Excuse me. We see this driving mass notification projects more than anything. Uh, organizations see it very critical and strategic to provide the right level of safety for their, their employees, their visitors, their contractors, their customers, so that when an event occurs, and it's not if, it's when, they're able to say, we act, reacted accordingly. We provide these notifications, we notify these people, and uh, we got the word out so that we could save lives. That's a lot better story and uh, strategically than well, we weren't prepared for this at all. Uh, we were thinking about it, but we haven't implemented it yet. So we're really seeing that as driving it. Um, as, as evidence of that, you know, when the, the uh, Navy Yard shootings occurred, there were a lot of people that didn't feel secure going back to those buildings. There were uh, rumors that you know, fire alarms were pulled to push people out into the, into the line of fire. Um, you know, solutions that, that alerts can help you with can help, say, help uh, avert that fear in coming back to work if an event happens, but also you know, interrupt and, and uh, keep some of those things from happening with some of our fire panel integrations. Anyways, to kind of bring all that together is Alertus provides single point of activation. Uh, that doesn't, have, doesn't, doesn't mean one point of activation. It means that you can go and choose your point of activation. You can do a mobile app. You can activate uh, from a uh, web browser. You can activate from a panic button. You can even do uh, automated alerts where you connect our system up to lightning data feeds, weather feeds, some of your internal IT and uh, sensor systems to be able to automate a message so that that message gets activated and then cascades through all those different uh, components. You'll see all those puzzle pieces from earlier kind of come together with the Alertus system, digital signage, cable TV, outdoor sirens, PA systems, desktops, Facebook and Twitter, all those kind of things. So what we mean by single point is bringing all that together and making it easy to activate whether it's automated or from a uh, user initiated input. Uh, integrate all notification assets, bring all those things together as I mentioned. And then lastly, fill in those gaps with innovative alerting endpoints. What I mean by that is Alertus is unique in that we provide manufacturing where we started with the alert beacon, a capability to very cost effectively retrofit buildings. If you've got coverage gaps uh, when you do your tests and find out that, hey, the loading dock isn't covered very well, you can easily put a couple strobes and alert beacon back there and they're going to be fully informed in those locations. Uh, Cafeterias, large gathering areas are perfect for our LED marquee. So these innovative alerting endpoints really help to supplement and bring together your entire uh, notification uh, strategy. So here's a uh, updated uh, image that we've uh, kind of added a few of our, our newer products and capabilities, but still brings together the, the, the core or essence of the system. You'll see across the bottom there's many different ways to get the message in. It could be through our API integrated with our text or email service providers that we partner with. Threat Watcher, which allows you to bring in any kind of uh, weather-related NOAA, um, lightning data, any of your inputs from your own systems and sensors to automate messaging. And then CAP, as I mentioned earlier, really adhering to FEMA and IPAWS, we adhere to all those standards so that our system is fully integrated with any other system, we can receive uh, CAP formatted messages and automatically process those as well. So we adhere to those standards. The other option is to activate from a web-based console, from your uh, mobile app, uh, mobile application. You'll log in credential and you'll have full access to act activate on the fly. Uh, so many different ways to get that message in. Next string gets it out, either wired or wireless, Ethernet. Power or Ethernet is very popular with the customers. It's very easy. It fits into their existing architecture, uh, just like a uh, phone systems install, the, uh, the closed circuit TV system, with cameras, and those kind of things. It fits into to what IT and what your organization is, is networking your buildings and doing today. We could also, if, if wiring is kind of a challenge, do wireless, either using Wi-Fi, uh, telemetry-based paging, which is kind of a proprietary uh, site-based paging capability, or FM radio subcarrier. For some of the campuses that are fortunate enough, uh, many of our college campuses, 
have a uh, FM radio station, we can use that as well. And then also you could mix and match these wired and wireless connections to provide your redundancy that you need. So if your power goes out, you're not as um, confident in your data network and, and that infrastructure, you can provide uh, wireless options to supplement those connections so that you've got those redundancies in the emergency. And then from there, we get the message out to all kinds of different devices, network attached uh, software solutions, those kind of things. First is the alert beacon, which I mentioned is great for retrofitting facilities. It provides an audiovisual notification capability, flashes sounds, gets your attention, and displays that message. Uh, you can put those throughout your facility. We recommend uh, strongly entrance exits, common areas, congregation hallways, um, very, very visible locations that people are going to hear that, get, to, get, get interrupted, come over, read that message, and make the right, uh, the, the right decision on what to do. Uh, the LED marquee, that supplements the alert beacon, provides a larger form factor. So if you've got a very, very large uh, congregation area, entryway, uh, very large uh, conference rooms, lecture halls, those kind of things, this is great because then people get hear the sound of the beacon going off, they know something's up, they, they're directed their attention in that direction, and they see the LED marquee. Well, you'll also see something very new, which we'll talk about in the future, is also an LED graphic display. This allows us to do multimedia notification and a flat panel type configuration. So you can modify the, the text, add images, do, do a lot of different things that really will add more to your emergency notification capability. And also that sign could be used for other things, just like our, our standard LED marquee, uh, in the event it's not being used in emergency. Uh, next is our, uh, desktop, our desktop notification capability. We're able to take over our computer screens. This was really somewhere where a lot of our customers will start. It's very easy and quick to get the software installed. You, you're adding hundreds, if not thousands, or tens of thousands of emergency alerting endpoints. It gets the notification out right in front of everybody. So these are really uh, a very good way to start as well, and then build out and round out your solution capability. Next is our uh, panic button. This provides the ability both wired and wireless and uh, USB-based to be able to work with PCs be able to initiate an alert. You'll see that as part of my demonstration. I'll use a panic button. I'll probably use the uh, USB-based panic button to be able to activate that alert right from a, uh, a PC and then notify everybody within that building as a preset. Next is the Alerts app. We've got two parts of that. One is a activation app, so anybody that's got credentials to log in will be able to log in and see their specific view and notifications that they're allowed to activate. Or we've also got the capability to do a push notification to an Alerts app that your users would have. So we can push this uh, notification out and notify uh, both Apple and Android phones of a uh, impending issue. So this is using either Wi-Fi or cellular connection with that, that cell phone to be able to push that notification. Next is digital signage. We work with multi-vendor digital signage systems. You could have, depending on when your buildings were built, when your campus made decisions, which department, you could have four or five different systems. You're probably trying to consolidate those. Well, when it comes to using those emergency assets, don't worry about that right now because we've got the ability to either add software or connect into all those different systems. So even if you have five different digital signage systems, we can uh, trigger those off with a notification at the point of notification with that single point of activation. So you don't have to go and find the administrators. That goes for even right down to every once in a while we'll find uh, customers that are running one or two signs that have a, a PC or just a you know just a player that they, they were able to find you know off the internet or something like that. Very simplistic, but we're still able to connect that into that and notify in the in the event of even those setups. So we've got a solution for you there. Next is the cable TV override. We can connect into the cable TV where it comes into campus, whether it's a head end system, we can interface with that as well. Uh, then the next one is the uh, VoIP phone capabilities. We support both Avaya, uh, uh, Cisco, and Shortel at this point. We're looking to add other manufacturers to be able to use that IT asset to be able to push a notification, whether a text-based notification, a WAV file, to get people's attention as, as well using that asset. And then I saved the best for last uh, for, as for this uh, presentation. We've got the voice-based assets. You've got outdoor giant voice, could be siren systems. Uh, we can interface with your existing systems, but if you don't have a system today, we can provide a full amplified outdoor voice system and, uh, pictured up there in the top right uh, to be able to uh, notify outdoor areas. 
And we use our text-to-speech, we'll optimize for that, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we optimize for Giant Voice, either with our system or integrated with others. Indoor public address systems, we've got an uh, interface that allows us to use any kind of uh, voice-based PA system. So going way back even, you know, you could have something that's 10 or 20 years old that uh, supports our interface. Uh, we'll, we'll interface with that and provide capability. And then lastly, as I mentioned, uh, the fire alarm control panel. A lot of these panels are going in with voice-based capabilities. We have the, the ability to use that, both supported by the codes through NFPA, which uh, is probably governing your, your, your jurisdiction, but also uh, we've got the technology interface with that to, to use that, that capability so that you can very cost-effectively get notification out and bring more and more buildings from your campus into the mix. So this gives you that, that general overview of Alertis, both bringing the message in, automated, button push uh, through a panic button or through uh, user input, wired or wireless connections, and then all the different endpoints we can integrate to give you that single point of activation. So here's where I get into text-to-speech, really getting into the details of how we can do text-to-speech, how we can leverage your voice-based assets, and uh, some of the benefits there. So the text-to-speech capability allows you to step away from pre-recorded. You're not, you don't have to have these messages recorded ahead of time. You don't have to plan. It doesn't have to fit the 1, 2, 3, 8, 16, 24 pre-planned messages that are maybe generic that don't provide a lot of details about what's going on. This allows you to really uh, go, go in and, and provide specific information related to the emergency, specific updates. As the, the situation evolves, you don't want to just hit, oh, there's another active shooter you know, notification that's your standard. You want to be able to say, the, the shooter has been apprehended, uh, the situation is over, uh, you want to be able to say we've, impact, we've isolated this to the northeast uh, portion of campus or certain building, all others uh, continue to, to uh, shelter in place but you're out of harm's way, something in that effect. It gives you that capability to, do, to mix and match or, or on the fly really customize your messages. Uh, it also overcomes a lot of challenges with unintelligible live voice. So the other part of uh, you know, getting on a speakerphone, other than people accidentally messing up the message, is also that when you talk too fast, when you're, if you put somebody on there with too high pitch, too low tone, uh, all these kind of things impact the intelligibility within, business, uh, within a building. We can optimize, and the text-to-speech provides the highest level in, of uh, intelligibility because we're taking that human aspect out of it. Somebody's not accidentally yelling into uh, the microphone, those kind of things. We know exactly what's being said, how it's being said, and can even tweak the speed at which it's being said so it's said appropriate to the, the speed and how, the, how you want that delivered uh, within that building uh, for that, that notification. Uh, and we do this and we accomplish this with an embedded compact PCB module. What does that mean? Basically, we've got a little piece of hardware that converts the signal that fire panels, audio systems, outdoor giant voices can, can understand, can read. It's basically like creating a, um, a microphone input uh, to be able to mic up the system and announce that message but not have to actually physically have somebody there or have that human element which could uh, introduce uh, challenges in delivering that message. This gives you an idea. Uh, for those that are more technical minded, there's a module. It can be placed with your PA systems. Uh, it's network connected and uh, can also be placed with, within uh, the fire panels, those kind of things. And the nice thing is we actually do the uh, text-to-speech conversion here at the uh, device. So we're not streaming uh, text-to-speech over from some server somewhere off in your network that the quality could be impacted, those kind of things. We're controlling the quality of that message right there. So all we're doing is this quick burst of text to get it out to your voice asset and then we're doing everything we need to do to convert that and play that over your, your voice system right there at the voice system. So this reduces those uh, challenges, those fail points, your network uh, issues that, that may occur during an emergency when traffic goes way up, and make sure that we deliver a very clear, intelligible alert. Key features, it's very cost effective. We're leveraging existing infrastructure. You made this investment in the past either by code reasons, somebody made a decision of facilities, you know, something something that effect, but it's there. Let's use it. Uh, let's, let's use that to notify those in the building. Uh, notification coverage, text-to-speech devices provide additional effective coverage for a wider area. So not only in addition to interfacing with your existing assets, we also have standalone uh, text-to-speech speakers that you can either that you can wall mount to do 
text to speech notification into local areas, into um, into uh, entryways, congregation areas, those kind of things to add audio compa compatibility there without having to go and install an entire PA system. So whether you've got a PA system or, or not, you want to do text to speech, we can help you. Uh, it's integrated, designed to integrate with ex external devices, including alert beacon, fire alarm panel, voice PA, outdoor giant voice, those big speakers and sirens, voice speakers, land mobile radios. We'll get into a little bit more of each of those too. It's very reliable. As I mentioned, we're not dependent on off-site servers and streaming over the network and fail points and those kind of things. And then lastly, a big thing with uh, adhering to the codes is ADA accessibility. We're able to provide that audio-visual uh, capability so those that are uh, sight impaired will hear the announcement, uh, not just a uh, not not just a tone, those kind of things, and, and know exactly how to react uh, to the to that announcement. So here I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the fire fire alarm audio. As I mentioned, NFPA allows us to use those speakers, so we're going to use them. Uh, allows organizations to lever that leverage that uh, audio system to distribute emergency notifications. TTS interface tied to the fire panel alert beacon for full emergency notification coverage. And then the TTS interface can produce audio, audio identifying where the event is taking place, i.e. the, the fourth floor. Uh, you can provide those customized details and exactly what's happening and how to react uh, using that, that audio capability and interfacing with text-to-speech into the fire alarm. To touch on the codes a little bit, I know a lot of our customers are very leery about you know, working with the fire panel. Good thing with uh, the way the codes have been uh, changed is there's no need to re-inspect the fire panel if we uh, use the line-in audio, which provides us the interface. And because we're not making any changes to the panel, we're just using those speakers. And two, any of those other uh, contact closures or on-off switches that we connect into the panel, uh, those also don't have to be inspected because they're, they're off-board uh, outputs, basically. So uh, you know, we're not actually changing any of the programming. We're just jacking into those speakers and providing that notification. Uh, which which is uh, which is supported by the code. So, uh, if you need any help with that, we're we're happy to jump in. We handle that often. Uh, but you know, if you're not using your your fire panel speakers, you're uh, losing a very large opportunity to notify people within your your notification strategy. Next is public address system TTS interfaces. Much like we interface with uh, the fire alarm systems, the uh, PA systems, their their common denominator is line level audio. We're able to plug in just like you would plug a microphone in, turn that on with, with the, uh, the module that we've got, and then make that announcement, turn it back off, and or re relinquish control so that uh, local announcements could potentially be made as well. Uh, this enables centralized control, a variety of uh, individual voice systems. So you can touch off any kind of voice system across your campus at any time based upon any of those activations. And they're automated uh, from your mobile app, from the web interface, those kind of things. And it extends emergency notification capabilities by linking your voice systems with alert beacons down on the wall and, uh, and buildings without your PA system. So what, what this means is if you don't have a PA system, we can supplement that. Uh, the, the bottom right is an indoor text-to-speech. We also have outdoor capabilities for uh, kind of uh, entryways, um, those kind of things, just outdoor uh, notification to be able to do text-to-speech in, in, uh, in targeted ways, basically. So you don't have to if you want to do speech, text-to-speech, install, install an entire PA system. You can selectively install our, uh, our text-to-speech self-amplified speakers with our alert beacon in strategic critical areas to, to optimize that budget and notification capabilities. Then i also like to touch on the outdoor. We've expanded beyond just doing uh, small outdoor areas to a giant voice capability. If you've already got speakers and giant voice capabilities, we can interface into that, optimize our text-to-speech, uh, to be able to, to uh, use those assets, or we can provide uh, that same capability on your campus with uh, an alert is provided solution end to end. Uh, the text to speech module uh, feeds the emergency message from the alert beacon and transmits it over the outdoor giant voice speakers. Uh, features siren tone and, and text to speech, so if you need a tone to proceed your notification, you get attention, and then deliver that, it, it can do that. And uh, also, we're able to use these both custom messages uh, from from your text-to-speech and or some of your pre planned messages to be able to activate uh, the text-to-speech. And as all those of you know that have outdoor giant voice systems, you need to be very well trained on how to make that announcement so that that is that announcement's intelligible. You've got to slow down your speech. You've got to add a lot of pauses. 
So as you make an announcement, you need to speak that like that certain way. We can optimize our text to speech to provide those pauses, slow down that speech, so that you're going to get the most intelligible voice. As a th as a uh, reoccurring theme from your indoor voice systems, having a human jump on that introduces potential uh, um, fail points. We're able to control the speed, the pauses, and deliver a custom message, and not be dependent on that individual. So so that's really a, a big strong uh, value proposition in the text to speech there. Next, which is exciting, is being able to interface with land mobile radios. Uh, a lot of our customers come to us, and they've got key response personnel that always have a radio on them. They've got their cell phone, they can get that message as well. They, they're, they're in your building, so they can receive the messaging that way. But if, if they were away, uh, a little bit further out of reach or something like that, they would be able to hear the announcement of their land mobile radio. We'll break into that channel, make that message, uh, repeat that message the number of times uh, you, you desire and then close that channel out or, or open it out, out, up, I guess, uh, to allow your first responders to use that. So those that are dependent on their radios, they're getting that message that's being announced real time right on their radio as well. Uh, so there, you know, we support a number of different base stations. We can take a look at your solution and, uh, and confirm that we can support that as well. But a lot of times that's uh, very valuable for our customers. So at this point, we get to uh, do the exciting part. We get to do a demo. We're going to go ahead and uh, demo uh, our text-to-speech through our PA system here in the, in the building, which is also run through the, uh, through the uh, fire panel, which you'll see in the back there. I'm going to do a uh, panic button push, which is going to be our, our, uh, our uh, USB-based panic button that's connected to a uh, laptop PC that's over there. That's going to be a lockdown. I'm going to demonstrate, not, I, won't, I won't talk during this, but I'll demonstrate an all-clear where I will, you'll see within our user interface that I'll modify that all clear message. Uh, and, and you'll see that we'll actually pick up full text as we go. Uh, so that, that'll give you a good idea of how we can customize, how you can customize the message on the fly with text to speech. You go ahead and jump out. So you'll see our, our demo facility um, in our uh, training room here on the uh, camera on the upper right. I'm going to go ahead and log into our, our user interface on the web. Uh, so that we can uh, go ahead and, and you can see the message activated. You'll see there's multiple ways emergency activation is on all systems. Preset, this will be a, a message of presets that, uh, that you can activate and custom allows you to fully customize that message. So I'm going to go ahead and jump up and uh, I'm at the front desk. Something happens, I need to lock down that building. I've got a lockdown button at my PC. You go ahead and push that and you'll see immediately our endpoints start activating. We've got the intruder alert. Here's a the desktop work phone. A facility-wide intruder lockdown has been issued. Follow standard shelter in place procedures. More information to follow. And then you'll see our, our alert going out. Facility-wide intruder lockdown has been issued. Follow standard shelter in place procedures. More information to follow. So you saw the alert across the bottom. Why intruder lockdown has been issued. I went ahead and canceled that. That's cycling through. You, you'll see the, the desktops went back to normal behavior. Beacons are off. And our uh, digital signage is back to, uh, to the news uh, feed that, that's up there right now. So to give you an idea of, uh, of the uh, customizability of the uh, text-to-speech, we know when we have an all clear, we need to announce that it is all clear so that people aren't held up underneath their desks, stressing out, freaking out. So we want to say that, you know, all clear emergency condition is over, return to normal activities. We want to go ahead and say the uh, emergency condition, uh, we want to change that to I am intruder. So over return to normal activities, thank you. Whoop. Thank you for joining the demo today. So uh, this would be something that would be unique to this emergency, which is actually a demo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue. It gives you a quick snapshot. You can see that uh, all, all the, uh, the duration is two minutes, the message. We also have a quick snapshot of beacons we have up, desktop, cable TV, all those kind of things. We, we see that 
about half our devices are online. And this is a demo system, so uh, we don't always see all, all the devices online because we, we just have what's in this room connected right now. I'll go ahead and hit send. You'll see that message come up. Uh, we've got a, all the different devices going off. The, uh, the green for the beacon for all clear. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we've got a different tone oh, going on VoIP. The intruder lockdown is over. Return to normal activities. Thank you for joining the demo today. All right, so you'll see very, very simply we're able to make All a custom clear. message. The intruder lockdown is over. Return to normal activities. Thank you for joining the demo today. All right, so then we hit cancel there, and uh, we've, we've gone back to, to normal state. Uh, the, the emergency is over. We've communicated the all clear, and we've even tweaked the all clear so that people know the, that the incident that we reported on or that we, we initially notified, they know that that has been, uh, has been cleared up and uh, they can go about the normal uh, daily tasks. Uh, just as we're in the demo system, just as a quick review, we've got a lot of reporting, so we can uh, bring up our alert history. Uh, you can see... Uh, exactly all the different notifications that were activated. So here's our all clear, all the different information about that, who activated, who was logged in, all the different <coughs> settings, parameters. Here was our lockdown facility, uh, which you can see was, uh, was uh, activated from a desktop notification. And then you can bring up reports around device activations, device acknowledgement, so our desktop allows user to acknowledge. Also, when I silence the beacons, uh, that, that's a form of acknowledgement. You can also track recipients. So just to give you a quick snapshot of the, uh, the report for uh, activation, you can see uh, within the first 10 seconds, all three alert beacons activated, the desktop and our cable TV digital signage interface that crapped over, over a period of time. If, it, uh, whatever, uh, if there were any devices that took any longer, you would see that. Uh, and then also we've got a, uh, a downloadable uh, version of that report as well. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into the uh, device acknowledgments, or actually I did, I did acknowledge uh, some of the, the uh, alert beacons. I can show you how that, that appears. So you can see I acknowledged uh, two of the alert beacons within 30 seconds. Um, we ended up not, we didn't acknowledge any of the desktops, uh, so those weren't acknowledged. Uh, so only two devices out of this. Same at graphs that provide you input. Uh, in the last piece of reporting that I'd like to touch on, there, there are a lot more detailed reports, is device status. You can bring up at any one point in time, you can have this emailed to you at a regular interval, but the exact status of the alert is system. Every endpoint is monitored, our cable TV override, you can see alert beacons, our, our desktop, those kind of things. Uh, anything in white or light blue is, is active, ready to go. Anything in red is, is offline that, that either needs troubleshooting or maybe you're aware that that, that was uh, uh, an old device that was uh, taken out or something like that, in which case you can modify the report, but it'll give you... Uh, a full snapshot of your, your system uh, real time, which is huge. So that, at this point, uh, we've gone ahead and uh, that, that was the, the planned demo. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the uh, slide deck, and then we'll, we'll open up to uh, Jamie for uh, to moderate any questions that, were, uh, that came up, and uh, also to talk about uh, future webinars uh, that we'd love, love to have you join. Great. Thanks so much, Ryan. Uh, looks like we have had a number of questions come in during the presentation. Uh, if you would like to submit a question, uh, we welcome you to do so. Um, you can type that into the questions box, and we will get to as many questions as we have time for. Um, so uh, we'll jump right in. Uh, first question uh, really kind of talks about the live voice versus a pre-recorded message um, and thinking about kind of Alertus' very unique text-to-speech technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, can you elaborate on why text-to-speech technology is better than live voice or a pre-recorded message? Definitely. Uh, text-to-speech uh, is a lot better than uh, live voice because you're taking that human element out of it, that fail point uh, where, one, intelligibility, if you're talking too fast, too loud, your, your voice is too high-pitched, you're panicked, uh, that intelligibility goes down on those voice systems. The Alertus text-to-speech provides a nice, calm, consistent, controlled notification and optimizes that intelligibility. Second is the human factor as well is that sometimes that message, for whatever reason, gets changed slightly, isn't read exactly as uh, you as an emergency manager intends it, 
because somebody is out there making that message. We've even heard them say, you know, get confused during the message, stop halfway, cause confusion. This takes out that human element. Uh, for the uh, pre-recorded piece, pre-recorded is very good because you're taking that human element out, you're controlling intelligibility, but you're limiting yourself to the number of announcements a lot of times. You, the pre-recorded, a lot of the times, you know, you can get 10, you know, 12, 16, 18, 24, something like that. There's a lot more cost in, in building those out ahead of time. If your notification challenges changes and threats within your campus change, uh, that you've got to go back and readdress all those pre-recorded. Uh, and then lastly, the pre-recorded is very general. You can't get in, in, in detailed information like the intruder lockdown is over, we have apprehended the, the individual, and, uh, you know, we'll, and provide additional details which provide a capability that people, you know, that, that makes them feel good that the, system, that the alert that they received is being addressed and uh, being addressed uh, directly to that alert. So that customizability and lastly, you know, you know that it's Murphy's Law. If you, if you put 16 different announcements, uh, scenario 17 is going to happen. Uh, Text-to-speech allows you to adapt on the fly to be able to handle all the different things that might be thrown at you and be able to get that message out there. And lastly, uh, we a lot of times integrate with your, your text-to-speech, or uh, sorry, not text-to-speech, but also with your uh, text email system that allows you to send through our API connections, our partnerships with all the text and email providers, the ability to send that message straight through and have whatever somebody in, that runs your text, uh, text and email so support, uh, whatever they type in, can go straight down to your all your other mass notification systems uh, without having human intervention or interpreting which pre-recorded should be announced. So quite a few different advantages uh, to the pre-recorded versus uh, others. Great, thank you, Ryan. Uh, the next question um, kind of expands on uh, your response just now, thinking about customization that's available with text-to-speech. Can you talk a little bit about or provide some examples of ways that customers might choose to customize their message? Oh, this is a great question. Uh, you're, you're able to customize the message on the front-end interface. You can type in, as you saw, whatever you want, but there's more to it. With the alert system and this extra speech, we can add a tone, get people's attention, to so customize that. You can either select, you know, just the text to speech announcement, or you can select tone, and then text to speech. You can that, that's a wave file, so you can select uh, a specific tone related to your campus, or a tone you want to get people's attention. So that's one customization. Uh, the second is we'll optimize for your your system. So if you want it. Uh, slower notification than our standard speed. The, the speed can be optimized and slowed down or sped up. Sometimes we have customers say, hey, we really need it to speak it faster in this facility so that we can get those messages out. We can customize there. Thirdly, we can also, if you've got uniquely uh, enunciated locations, building names, street names, we can, as part of uh, your, your text-to-speech deployment, optimize phonetically those different street names. So you can send us a list of uh, those those names or uh, words or buildings that you might think that our text to speech has, has might have an issue with, and you'll be surprised that it does very well with most. But as we know, there's certain pronunciations that need to be tweaked. We can phonetically tweak those for your campus so that those building names are said correctly, uh, which is a, another customization. And any text to speech system you order after that will incorporate those correct phonetic enunciations of your, your specific locations or buildings. So a uh, really good way to customize that. And as you heard from our system, you know, it's, it's very, text-to-speech has come a long way. We've got one of the best engines we, we use in the industry. And, uh, you know, it, it provided, people used to using or receiving direction from a text-to-speech uh, from the years and years of being conditioned from our GPS systems. It's kind of calming to be able to receive nice call messaging on, you know, where, where to go, what to do, and what, what emergency ways to head. So uh, can I give you an idea of uh, station in there, which, which, you know, it will say anything you want, so <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, we do have time for uh, several more questions. Again, we encourage you to uh, submit those through the questions box. Uh, really quickly, I just wanted to draw your attention to uh, the presentation slide. As Ryan mentioned, we have a number of exciting upcoming presentations. 
Uh, our next presentation uh, is going to be in late June. Uh, this will be a really great, um, a great webinar. Uh, we're going to have guests from Washington University in St. Louis. Um, emergency management experts from the university will be speaking to um, their specific um, emergency notification system, uh, the, process, the process that they've gone through, some of the various components that they've uh, integrated in to sort of achieve this uh, one-touch comprehensive system. So highly encourage you to sign up for that. Again, that will be in late June. Uh, we also have two additional webinars coming up, one in late July. Uh, this will be a similar alert system overview webinar. Um, in particular, it will focus on uh, the USB panic button, uh, the options that are available with that solution. Um, and finally, in August, we'll have a webinar um, really focusing in on some of the mass notification integration components that uh, Alertus provides with its solutions. If you're interested in learning more about any of these webinars, if you'd like to register, we encourage you to go to our website, www.alertus.com forward slash Alertus webinar series. Um, you're also welcome to email us at marketing at alertus.com. If you have any questions um, following up to this webinar, um, as I mentioned, this webinar is being recorded and that will be available following the session. Uh, again, if you would like a copy of that, just send us an email at marketing at alertus.com. Uh, now, getting back into some of the questions, I see we've had a couple more come in. Uh, our next question, Ryan, really gets into the text-to-speech functionality. Um, is there, can the text-to-speech function be transmitted across several devices simultaneously? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the the line-in audio can uh, plug into there. There are some limitations on the distance that line audio can go. Line-in audio can go, but if you've got two voice-based systems in the same building, and uh, we can plug that that audio from one text-to-speech interface into both of those voice-based systems to make sure that they, they notify. Now, if they're uh, in different buildings uh, stretched across your campus, you would have to um, put a text-to-speech capability in each of those buildings. But, but yeah, we can definitely connect in in, in series multiple voice-based systems. In fact, that's pre that's preferred so we can coordinate and make sure that the same audio is going at the same time so you're not getting any echoing and those kind of things within a facility. Excellent. Um, our next question uh, really speaks to the integration with the PA system and outdoor speakers. Uh, this particular attendee says that they have a PA system and outdoor speakers currently. Um, they want to know how can the text-to-speech component um, pair with that existing infrastructure. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's a good situation. Uh, we would uh, interface our text-to-speech module right at the amplifier. Uh, the amplifier has the, the inputs that line in audio, which is basically like going up and pulling a microphone into the system, to be able to turn it on, uh, a activate that amplifier, and then, uh, and then uh, make that announcement over your PA system. And then once the announcement's uh, complete, we'll send a signal to the, uh, the amplifier to turn it off. Uh, if you're a little bit more technical audio-visual, there's a line in audio. We use a contact closure to turn that on. That's pretty much similar to a button push on a microphone. So we uh, just turn it on for the, the announcement and then, then turn that off. Uh, that allows if, if you needed to make additional announcements or uh, local control, you'd still be able to control that even with the alertist making that, that announcement. But you would have that, that uh, overall control from remotely even of that text-to-speech capability of your PA system and not have to uh, make significant investments in upgrading equipment and those kind of things. Thank you, Ryan. Um, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for uh, today's webinar. Um, again, the webinar is being recorded, so if you would like a copy of that video, again, just email us at marketing at Thank you all for joining us, and have a great afternoon.